I'm James. This is The Fan Showdown, Season 2, Episode 7, Big Brain. And we're calling today Big Brain because while not everybody is number one, I thought all these fan designs had like a nice 500 IQ moment. So Big Brain seemed like it fit. So, uh, so let's start with Hendrik. Hendrik, Hendrik said, hey there, and greetings from Germany. So right there, that's, that's all we gotta know. <laughs> if there's anything we've learned about the Germans is that they start with plus five engineering right out of the box. So, do you remember the shovel fan? I mean, that's a fan made of shovels in its third place. The fan design I sent you was called the All In, where I throw all the features I like into one fan design. And it was a test to use Fusion 360. While I come from Siemens NX12, it's uh, different. NX12, yeah, it's a, it's a little different. It's, what he's talking about is something called Unigraphics or I guess that's what it used to be called. It's now called NX12. But as somebody that does design or 3D design quite often, um, I've never used Unigraphics. And for some context, in real life, I work as a mechanical project engineer and in the building I work in, there's hundreds of other engineers and designers that will spend hours a day using 3D modeling software. You wanna know how many of them use Unigraphics? You wanna know how many licenses of Unigraphics we have? One. And it's not even a license that lives on the network. Normally you pull our SolidWorks license, Katia license from the network to use them. This one just lives on a workstation in a corner that no one uses. I've seen one person ever use that Unigraphics computer and he doesn't even work here anymore. So I don't think anybody at all uses it. It's just there just in case. Anyway, I find Hendrix's design interesting. He's basically watched a bunch of fan showdown videos, seen what he thinks works the best, what he likes. It's kind of put them all into one fan design. And if I was going to say anything about this, it's one of those fans you, like after it printed out, I picked it up and I was like, I don't know what it is about this fan, but it just looks like, it looks like it's gonna do good. Doesn't it? I mean, there's something about it, right? Now next up we have Jung. And um, again, I do apologize if that was not how you pronounce it right. I'm not really the best pronouncer. But anyway, he sent us a fan called 21 Boxes. And I think it's brilliant. What he's done here is he's taken a simple object, a box, and he's modified it slightly to do work. And I think that's, uh, I think that's interesting. 21 boxes, as the name suggests, is composed of 21 small boxes placed on a 20 degree angle. John is hoping that by using a box, he's gonna get two lifting surfaces for the price of one. Think like a biplane or I guess box kite would be a better thing to think about about this? Maybe none of those are any good? <laughs> They're boxes. Two lifting surfaces, I don't know. Regardless, the 21 boxes has 42 lifting surfaces throughout its seven blades. Another fan that I love. I like it when people just take like random objects and turn them into fans like the biohazard symbol, it's still up there. Also put the nice little uh, design on the hub. I don't know why, but I like that too. Is that weird? Now I found this next one. <laughs> Interesting is a bit of an understatement. I found it very, uh, Intriguing. This is the disc. It was created by Mark. Now Mark knows a thing or two about computer parts because he works for a, for a company called Seagate. You ever heard of him? Mark said the inspiration for this fan came from the fact that he works at Seagate Technologies and one of the issues they've always had to deal with was something called disc pumping, which basically the air inside the hard drive. This, this, I don't know if it's basically this. I didn't really, couldn't find a bunch of information on it, but from what I, assume it's uh, probably something similar to like a Tesla turbine where the, the platters spinning next to each other with a very tiny gap between them pumps the air and then causes vibration. And we do know that vibrations in a hard disk are bad. You can take that to the bank. But uh, I think that's what's happening here. For this design, he said the ratio of the OD to the ID and the gap between the disks affects the pumping. Giggity. He also said he wasn't sure if this was gonna be something that you can print, given that the support material between the two discs would be impossible to remove. And it was. At first, like normally I print the fans like this, it makes, basically all, you get like an entire layer line over the cross section of the fan to make it stronger. Problem is, is that if you do that, you got all these floating discs in there and then you have to put material, support material between it, and good luck trying to get support material out from underneath that. So basically at first I was like, I'm not gonna be able to print that. That's cool, but we'll never know if it's gonna work. But then I was thinking, once if I printed it like I would if I was printing it in a resin printer? That way I put the whole fan on a 45, I don't have to put any support material underneath or between the discs, they can just print out and that actually worked. You can see how the layer lines are formed on this fan disc. 
but in the end it came out halfway decent. The gaps are clear in the support material. I don't know if it was this material or just luck of the draw came off pretty easily. Now last but not least is Chris. And Chris designed a fan called the LAP, which stands for loud as possible. Why you might ask? Chris is taking something that every, every other fan manufacturer out there in the world tries to minimize. He's taking that aspect of fan design and he's turned it up to 11. That thing is called blade pass frequency. Now what blade pass frequency is essentially is the noise that a sound blade makes as it passes back, passes back, passes by something that's stationary. Um, in this setup, this actual fan, this is the frame that it goes in. These spokes that hold the motor are that stationary thing that the blade passes to create that sound. So normally, like if you look at this Noctua fan, the, the spokes here are kind of angled backwards when compared to the rotation of the fan disc. And the blades are swept forward. That means that when the fan crosses a spoke, only a little piece of the blade crosses at any given time, making the sound not as pronounced. Well, Chris, Chris's fan don't do that. He's essentially mimicked the same sweep angle as these spokes so that the entire face of the blade passes the spoke at the same exact time, which is gonna make it louder. And then he's, he's got four blades here because there's four spokes and he wants all the blades to cross the spokes at the same time to exaggerate the sound even more. And this is no accident. Chris knows what he's doing. He said he works as a mechanical engineer that normally does a lot of work with um, pumps and that what we're doing here is what he normally tries to avoid when designing turbines. So is it loud? Ah, well. The LAP came in at an ear shattering 56.9 dBA. The disc fan was a bit calmer at 48.9 dBA. Twenty one boxes was also a bit noisy at fifty two point five DBA. And the all in was up there as well at fifty point six DBA. So actually all four of these fans were not that quiet. The LAP was probably one of the loudest fans we've ever tested. I mean, I couldn't remember any other fan that we've ever had on this fan showdown that's louder than the LAP.
But was all that noise put to good use? The disc fan was the quietest, but it also performed quite poorly uh, and got a good old DNF as it thermally throttled within about eight minutes of starting the, uh, starting the cooling test. So, unfortunate. The loudest possible came in with an average temperature of 75.5 at a room temperature of 20.8, giving it a delta of 54.7. The 21 boxes came in with an average temperature of 77.4 at a room temperature of 21, giving it a delta of 56.4. The all-in came in with an average temperature of 75.1 at a room temperature of 20.5, giving it a delta of 54.6. Putting the all-in in first place, the LAP in second, 21 boxes in third, and the disc fan in fourth. But overall, they, uh, they killed it as well. The all-in is now first place overall, with the LAP in second place overall, and 21 boxes moves to fifth place overall. Wow, when's the last time we've seen that much movement on the leaderboard? It's pretty, pretty awesome. But now it's up to you. Can you, can you make a fan louder than the LAP or perform better than the all-in? Well, if you think you can, uh, go to my Thingiverse account to get the drawings that'll show you all the dimensions you need to hit. Then make sure to send me at least an STL file to thefanshowdown at gmail.com so, uh, so you can find your way up to the board. Or, you know, easier yet, just watch this video that I made that explains pretty much everything you need to know about submitting a fan to the fan showdown. We'll see you next time.